when you've completed it once, you can replay it on the hardest of the three difficulty settings, which wasn't available before, with everything you've gained on your playthrough intact. You see, you earn XP when you fight. These experience points can be used to upgrade your abilities and unlock new fighting moves and such. It's a feature we're seeing a lot today, and they don't do anything special with it as such. It's average. The graphics are decent. As usual, you can tell where the Wii just can't quite push it anymore. And as usual, this is especially noticeable in the lighting, which is very basic in this game and doesn't change much. The areas and the levels are also very small, and you can't see very far before it's just dark or horizon or whatever. Also, many of the areas in these levels are literally tiny. You might pass through an area in less than a minute and or without there being any enemies. I mean, a couple of times in the game this actually happens. And you'll have moved on to a new checkpoint. The game auto saves, and this means that you never have to replay very much when you die. I say when you die because it does on occasion happen. At times this can be fairly intense. And there are some memorable and cool locations and challenges. No Nord, Agent Zero, he pursues you in a chopper. And this happens near the base at Alkali Lake. So he's firing missiles at the ice that you're trying to run across, forcing you to very swiftly jump from place to place. There's also a bit where you have to run away from the dam, you know the one, being flooded. These spots tend to be pretty fun and are really the best thing about this game and help this game make at least something of a mark in your memory. Animation isn't bad, except for the occasional pretty awkward movement. Like, there's this big enemy that will grab you and throw you down. And that in itself works well, but then his hand sort of rests atop you for a second or so. And I have no idea why it does this. The best I can come up with is that there was some trouble doing that animation, and that was how they had to solve that problem by letting him rest his hand like that for a second. Controls can feel a tad stiff. They aren't as smooth as they, as they could be and should be. This is Wolverine. In this you can also jump in any of the four main directions by using the little control pad at the top of your Wiimote. It is a little bit awkward and you're not gonna use it when you really need it most of the time, but it can also be very helpful it'll allow you to very swiftly move away from a boss when you can see him prepared to do a very strong attack. Now, I just said boss, I think I really should have used the word strong enemy. Because with the bosses, at times you really can't tell if they're gonna do a strong attack, if they're invulnerable and you shouldn't attack them at that particular time, or if this is when you should wail on them. And in spite of that, for some reason, the bosses are all quite easy. In fact, the last two are the easiest. And yes, this game does have a fairly anticlimactic conclusion. The plot from the film is followed pretty closely. They just expand on the scenes that you saw, such as Wolverine's escape from Stryker's base. There's a flashback to the mission in Africa that you saw near the beginning of the film. Something that is a little unfortunate in this is that about half the people you fight really aren't evil. I mean, an obvious one that you won't feel bad about attacking are Stryker's personal army. And no, I, I don't know how personal it is, I don't know if they know each other's favorite color, but then you also fight paid bodyguards and in fact, the game starts by you utterly decimating the population of woodsmen in Northern America or Canada or wherever it is in your pursuit of creed. The game has this oversight of everyone you fight, and in there it tries to tell you that, oh, they're bad, they're rednecks that hate mutants. I guess trying to remind you of that scene in the first X-Men movie when, when Logan had the gun pointed at him, and... 
I think there might be a scene in the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie where some of the woodsmen try to attack him. I honestly don't remember because it's such a forgettable movie. Anyway, you use your claws on these poor bastards. And it frankly just gets to be silly when you're basically standing in the same small area and they just keep coming at you wave after wave for a couple of minutes. I mean, do these guys never learn? At what point do you just say, okay, this guy's f killed a couple of dozens of my buddies? I'm gonna sit the It's actually kind of funny how early on when you're pursuing Creed, you like follow his trail of the dead woodsman that he's killed, and yet you yourself kill three or four times as many, at least. The enemies tend to be humanoid in this, but the weaponry does change. They especially do pretty well at that with Striker's Force. Striker's Strike Force. Striker's Strike Force, the Striker sh forces to strike with. F I'm gonna stop now. Basic ones will have an assault rifle, some have gas grenades, some just use martial arts against you and defend themselves pretty well, you know, blocking your attacks. Some use electrical weapons to stun you, and the most creative, the ones that turn invisible. You can't see them, but you can enter this thing called sense mode, and you still can't see them, but their movements will leave a scent. So you see these tracking lines from where they're trying to punch you, or where they're moving, and you attack based on that. That's pretty cool. You can't stay in sense mode indefinitely, and I think it has to charge up after you've used it at least for a while. The game doesn't do a terribly good job of telling you this. But you can always just stand still for a few seconds and it'll recharge. During sense mode, the screen gets a red tint, and objects that you can interact with, whether it's by using them or smashing them, and as I found out the hard way, also objects that you should not walk onto in some cases will be yellow so there's a nice contrast there and sometimes when you're chasing this or that person or group they'll leave a scent and you can follow that trail only visible in sense mode the characterization stays relatively close to the movie there's occasional pretty good banter especially between Creed and Wolverine the voice acting it's okay. I'd say the one who does best is probably Schreiber. I was just as skeptical as everybody else about his taking over the role of Sabretooth. Tyler Maine did pretty good. And when I watched the movie, I was quite surprised about just how right I was. He really wasn't as intimidating as Tyler Maine. But here he doesn't do too bad. He really gets that kind of cat-like, I'm gonna toy with you psychopath thing. Hugh Jackman owns as Wolverine in the films. Here, I don't know, some actors just do not make the transition to voice acting all that well. I'd say the best reading he gives is when he alerts you that there's something nearby. In most other cases, you know, he gets the overall tone and voice right, but the emotion is somewhat lacking. The AI is decent enough. I've seen a disarmed enemy present a knife and try to retrieve his rifle. You have no control over the camera yourself. It'll move dynamically and not always to your benefit. If you change your mind about the direction you're running in, it may show you what's behind you instead of what's in front of you. It's a little annoying how this feels the need to let you know that you completed a mission during the in-engine cutscene that follows a completed boss fight, for example. There are just about no extras in this, other than letting you read about the various enemies you fight, and the ability to replay it on the hardest difficulty with all the XP and upgrades that you've earned intact. The only thing is a rematch with the blob. As far as I can tell, you can't do this until you have defeated him in the game itself. Basically, if you defeat him in the rematch feature, you'll earn 750 XP's. 
If you do it within 5 minutes, you'll earn another 750 XP's, and that's it. All in all, this is not the best at what it does, but it isn't the worst either. Since the plot follows that of the movie, it's as stupid as that of the movie. If you very badly want a good Wolverine game, then this is okay. From what I understand though, the Wii version is not the better of the two versions, at least two versions, that there are. In the flashback mission, you actually can't always tell what people are saying. It's because of the radio distortion effect that they use. There's also at one point, and maybe this was a bug or something, although this game is actually surprisingly devoid of bugs and even glitches. But in the flashback mission, at one point, there was a lengthy African conversation, and it wasn't subtitled, and I didn't see the people who were having this conversation. I don't know what that's about. There isn't a lot of blood, and in general, it's not that violent of a game. Basically, when you slash at someone, there'll be a spurt of blood, no wound, there's no gore, that's it. That was my spoiler-free review of X-Men Origins Wolverine. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.